If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Coming up on the program, we're going to plant peppers, a tropical plant in a non-tropical place. And we're going to utilize some dead space in our garden that used to be a strawberry patch. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. HappyLeafLED.com, a commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. All indoors, no fans, no motors, simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer. Offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Well, we're planting peppers today. Now, we plant, we're planting them about a week later than normal. And the reason for that is one, We've got smaller plant starts. Now you can go to your local garden center, big box store and buy very large plants. We had some issues with potting soil early in the spring. We nearly lost our, most of our plants. Uh, we did lose some of them and we had to purchase some as well as we saved it with Mupu tea from uh, ManureTea.com. That saved a lot of our tomatoes and peppers uh, from actual death. So we held off a week because a week ago we had temperatures, heat indexes of 100 degrees and temperatures in the low 90s with no shade whatsoever. Even though these plants were hardened off, I didn't want to put them through that trauma of acclimating to that temperature in the ground and the transplant shock and all of that even when we water. So we held off a week. The temperatures are very mild, upper 70s now with a cool wind. We've worked, we, we haven't worked this bed at all. We've continued to uh, amend this bed with organic material. We've got coffee grounds here that we didn't work in. We've got some compost that we just kind of dumped in here and covered, the leaf, covered with leaves in the fall last year. And we've come in here, we've spot weeded where we needed to, and now we're planting peppers. These peppers are on the small side, yes, but once we get them in the ground, they're gonna do fine. They may be two or three weeks delayed on when we would normally get peppers but they will produce. Trop pe peppers are a tropical plant, so we want to put them in a very warm area. We don't want them in partial shade. We want them in full sun. Even though we have a maple tree, tree above us, the maple tree above us uh, uh, shades the garden about two, two and a half, three hours during the hottest portions of the afternoon. We still get the evening sun that cascades across the garden. And that's really, if you're gonna have one of the option, morning sun or evening sun, you wanna have that evening sun because that's the more intense sun. So that's what we have here. So I've uh, individually dug the holes here. I'm gonna add some Sustain 464, all natural fertilizer here. The recommended rate, now that I've dug this hole, uh, I'm kicking up, that's one worm, that's another worm. The garden is loaded, there's another worm. The garden is loaded with worms, uh, mainly because one, we don't till, and two, we've added a ton of organic material, and then they've come and they've made their home here. So now, the way you can remove, if you've got a cluster of, of peppers here, they should have been in all perfect scenario, uh, put in their own root maker cell, but we were in the process of recovering and saving them rather than trying to get them to grow. So these, this is a banana sweet pepper. So I'm just gonna take, punch it out of there, and loosen it up. And I'm gonna take the la largest one, which I can, I'll just take this one here, pull it out of the soil. And this will go through a little bit of a shock, but not bad. It has a good root establishment on it. So what I'll do is, is make a hole here. I'm not gonna bury it very deep. I'm just gonna bury it about a half inch above, let's go that way, above where the root system actually is. There's a slight chance that some more roots will form below my finger, but it's not like a tomato where it's gonna form anywhere the soil hits the stalk. So we'll nestle it in there. That's a rock, get that out of there. Pinch it down in there. And it, what you see here, it's kind of concaved. So one, when we hit the hook, hook the irrigation system up, the water will kind of pull and go to the root zone. I will add a little bit more uh, soil here. And then what we can do is we can take leaves and mulch 
around the plant also as a water retention mechanism. Uh, that's what you want to do with these, uh, any type of mulch to hold the, the moisture in. These will perk up. Uh, uh, they've done well in the container now that we've saved them. They'll perk up and they'll produce very, very good. Uh, you can put these about a foot apart, uh, 16 inches if you want to go a little wider. I put them a foot apart so as they grow, they'll kind of grow into just a shrub and they will produce very, very heavily. Uh, and we'll put an irrigation system on them to keep the water uh, on them and hydrated so we don't have any stressed plants. So growing eggplants in a large quantity or small quantity can be very successful. Now what we have here is a three foot by 10 foot bed, 30 square feet. We've got two uh, eggplants here at the high end or the beginning of the bed. Now these were purchased from our local garden center, Blue Mills Landscape Garden Center here. Uh, we got them early because we had some issues with our potting mix, uh, if you followed us on that story. But we've got these eggplants on the smaller variety, but they will do just fine. I got several different varieties and we've planted uh, this bed pretty heavy and pretty thick. We're going about 16 inch spacings. Now, if all conditions are good, these plants will get pretty much shrub-like uh, a whole row, just like you would hope to have, uh, kind of like what we have over next to it with the garlic. The, the plants are touching each other but not crowding. That's what we're looking for, that intense planting, not only for eggplants or, or garlic, but for all plants to utilize the space that we have available. So I've went through and I've spaced them. Now what I'm going to add here is a little bit of the Purple Cow Bioactive Compost. Um, you do a third of that per hole and then you mix the native soil in and then you plant on top of that. Um, also going to add some Sustain 464 fertilizer and work that in. And then you just take the native soil, kind of mix that all in. So then what I'm going to decide to plant in this one is uh, I'm going to do a Turkish eggplant. Now this is an orange with stripes on it. And we're just going to pull it right out of the root maker trays. We've got good roots on the plant here. So what we want to do is, after we fill that hole back in, because we've mixed this bioactive, we need to mix that in because you can't do it 100% strength. It will harm the plants. Even though it's armory listed, it's got a, uh, it, it helps the plants uptake the nutrients uh, in the soil. But again, you can't do it 100% strength. Uh, so now. Get it, and we want to plant it at the same depth in which it was in the container because even though eggplants are part of the nightshade family, like tomatoes, they just don't put on the roots up the stalk like a tomato would. Now what we can do is take leaves, this here we've surrounded with cardboard, any type of mulch, and I can bring more in here some more. We're going to basically hide the plant essentially, but that's going to help establish it and then it will pop through um, the hole here that we've created and you can do eggplants in a container. The thing with eggplants are they love a lot of heat, a lot of root heat. So if you're in an area and this we're in the higher porter, portions of the garden here where we get a lot of afternoon sun, if you can get a lot of root heat and keep the moisture to the roots, the eggplants will flourish like uh, crazy. We've grown them in the eco garden system before. Does really, really well, as well as black containers from Root Maker. It absorbs that heat. We keep the moisture to them and they thrive. So keep that in mind if you're trying to grow eggplants and haven't been quite successful. So this here used to be a very luscious strawberry patch that was planted in about 2011. Now strawberry patches usually last between five and seven years and this one's ran its course. These were June bearing and they progressively worked their way across up to the, the bed there that we have the jicama planted in. So we've kind of looked at it, some options here. Do we replant? Do we take the daughter plants and move them back? For what effort is put into this bed or how long this bed produces, which is about three weeks a year, we felt we're just going to let the strawberries run their course and we'll turn this back 150 square feet back into a more productive uh, per, uh, yearly production of uh, whatever we can grow here instead of just spending three weeks a year per, uh, letting something uh, produce and spending 47 weeks or whatever the case is um, uh, sitting here idle and not being getting any production out of it. 
So this area here next to the fence uh, had nothing in it. The strawberries had, had uh, no longer, they're all dead, they're, they've gone. So I took the lawnmower and made a path. And I'll continue, I'll do that another path here this coming week. Made a path, mowed it, mulched it, put it on the garden. Then I took BioSafe, the uh, weed killer that's designed for organic gardening, that's safe uh, for organic gardening. And I coated the ground and sprayed all the vegetation and killed that. Then I went in here with a garden fork and flipped over strategic locations and where we're going to plant our squash. Now the PVC pipes are not a permanent fixture here. It's just a way of identifying where our piles or our plants are going to go, our hills potentially. So we're going to do a couple of things here. Up on this end here, we've buried a Dripping Springs Oya, which is a porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly, it's two, two gallons, and that will water up to 36 inches around uh, the um, the Oya. So, so then I sprayed it with the BioSafe to kill the vegetation, took garden fork and strategically marked where I was going to plant the squash. Now, <clears throat> we're going to plant a variety of squash here, summer as well as winter. Now, that doesn't mean that one grows in a different time frame than the other. Just the winter squash will stay longer or uh, store longer over the winter months. Now, we've had some very good success by allowing the zucchini, the green zucchini, to grow very large and then let that, um, and it mimics a winter squash, and we've had it kept from July all the way through March before without any problems at all. So you want to get it very, very big in order to, for it to preserve that way. But here's what we've got. We've, we're going to plant the summer squash on this end and around the Dripping Springs Oya where the moisture consistently is going to feed the plants. We're going to do winter squash. So here's what we're growing uh, in this patch here. We've got Tatum summer squash, gray summer squash, eight ball summer squash, scallop, scallop yellow bush summer squash, kakuza, kazula summer squash, and here's our winter squash varieties that we're going to grow. Jumbo pink banana. Now this takes between 90 and 110 days. And then we're going to grow some sweet meat winter squash to the same time period, 95 to 110 days. These other varieties will take about 50 to 60 days. Uh, the Takuma, um, Tatuma squash, that's going to take 100 to 110 days, even though it is a summer squash. Everything else, um, scallop squash is going to take about that period of time. So again, kind of be ideal of what your time frame is here. So how are we going to plant this? Uh, Again, the white uh, PVC pipes is not thing uh, permanent. I'm going to put some sustained all-natural fertilizer uh, down. And we're going to work that in the soil. I flipped the soil over the garden fork and just loosened it up. Didn't go through and permanently weed it. Didn't add any amendments besides the fertilizer here. So what my recommendations are is on any type of squash, when I plant these, when I plant the winter, the summer, put about four or five seeds in the ground. Seems excessive, but that gives you an assurance of at least two will come up and you can wean it down to the most healthiest one because these will produce. Um, these are large seeds here. Uh, they're a pumpkin seed, uh, essentially. You can see we're going to put all five of those in the ground and then we will figure out what we want to do from there. Uh, just going to push them down knuckle deep. So a half inch, three quarters of an inch. Cover it up. You could mulch these lightly with shredded leaves, uh, chemical free grass clippings, uh, even uh, straw in order to hold some of the moisture in the soil. Oh, that tore that. Okay. Uh, these are very large seeds as well with a pink banana. And we're going to space them there and then just push them in the ground. And it's that simple to plant your summer squash utilizing a space in which was just going to be weeds because um, we weren't going to go through with a garden fork and, and clean it out that the strawberry patch had died. So find the spaces in your garden that are not being utilized and utilize them. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the